This presentation is part of the pharmacodynamics module and it will address the question, what are the common non-receptor targets of drug action? At the end of this presentation, you should be able to describe some of the non-receptor targets of drug action, such as voltage-gated ion channels, enzymes and transporter proteins, and identify other mechanisms of drug action employed in modern therapeutics. In the previous presentations, we have seen how drugs interact with cell surface receptors to initiate a signal cascade within the cell and produce their biological effects. We will now go on to explore some of the other mechanisms of drug action in the body that don't involve drugs interacting as receptor ligands. We have previously looked at ion channels that are directly activated by ligands binding to a receptor on the channel protein. These are often called ligand-gated ion channels. This distinguishes them from many other ion channels of the cell membrane close to the channel protein. These are known as voltage-gated ion channels. Depolarization produces a conformational change that opens the channel and allows ions to begin to pass through down their concentration or electrical gradients. These They are found in particular abundance in nerves and muscles, where voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels contribute to the onward transmission of waves of depolarization, and voltage-gated calcium channels contribute to neurotransmitter release in presynaptic nerve endings. Even though these channels are not under direct influence of ligand binding, it is possible for drugs to influence their permeability to the passage of ions. This is mainly due to the capacity of some drug molecules to preferentially occupy the channel to prevent any further passage of ions. Important examples of drugs acting at voltage-gated ion channels include the local anaesthetic lidocaine and anti-epileptic drugs which block sodium channels in the nervous system. Class 3 antiarrhythmic drugs such as amiodarone that block potassium channels in the heart and the calcium channel blocking drugs such as amlodipine that reduce calcium entry into smooth muscle. Enzymes are specialised proteins that act as catalysts to speed up biochemical reactions in all cells. They act to release energy stores, to activate and inactivate molecules and to break down or destroy unwanted molecules. They initially bind substrate molecules to a region of the enzyme protein called the active site. Once bound to the active site, the substrate will undergo a chemical reaction resulting in its conversion to a product. The reaction sometimes requires the participation of a cofactor. For example, kinase enzymes must bind ATP from which they extract a phosphate group to transfer to the substrate. Drugs can influence enzyme activity in a number of ways. First and most simply, they may act in a similar way to a receptor antagonist, occupying the active site and reducing the ability of substrate molecules to bind. This type of inhibition is called competitive inhibition. Second, a drug may bind to a different region of the enzyme in a way that changes the shape of the protein around the active site. The substrate is then unable to access the active site and cannot be metabolized by the enzyme. This is called allosteric inhibition. Finally, because some enzymes may also require binding of cofactors to allow them to catalyze their reactions, drugs may either compete for the cofactor binding site or interfere with the production of a cofactor, thereby reducing the activity of the enzyme. Drugs may also act on enzymes to activate them, to prevent their activation by endogenous substances, or to alter the availability of a cofactor. Some drugs are so-called prodrugs that require conversion by an enzyme into their active form in the body. Examples of common drugs that act by inhibiting enzymes are the angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors Ramipril and Lisinopril. 
used to treat hypertension and heart failure. The xanthine oxidase inhibitor allopurinol used to treat gout. The vitamin K epoxide reductase inhibitor warfarin used as an anticoagulant to prevent thrombotic occlusion of blood vessels. The cyclooxygenase inhibitors aspirin and ibuprofen used as antiplatelet and anti-inflammatory agents. Acyclovir used to inhibit herpes virus replication and the anticholinesterase drug neostigmine used to increase muscle strength in myasthenia gravis. Many biological processes require molecules and ions to move across otherwise impermeable membranes. This movement is enabled by specialized transporter proteins. Transport may be passive where the transported molecule is carried across the membrane down a concentration gradient, facilitated, where this passive transport can only occur if another molecule moves at the same time to maintain the correct intracellular environment, or active, where energy, supplied by ATP, is required to enable the transported molecule to be pumped against a concentration gradient. Drugs can act to influence the actions of transporters in different ways. First, they may lead to allosteric inhibition of the transporter protein by binding it and causing a conformational change that prevents it binding to its endogenous substrate. Second, they may bind to a transporter carrying site to prevent the binding of the molecule that is usually transported. Third, they may act as a false substrate for the transporter, being transported in preference to the intended substrate. Examples of drugs that produce allosteric inhibition of carriers include the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor fluoxetine, which potentiates the action of serotonin to relieve depression. The proton pump inhibitor, which prevents acid secretion into the stomach to treat peptic ulceration. The cardiac glycoside digoxin, which inhibits sodium and potassium exchange at the cell membrane and is used to treat atrial fibrillation. And the thiazide and loop diuretics, bendroflumothiazide and furosemide, which inhibit sodium reabsorption from the renal tubules, promoting sodium and water excretion in various diseases associated with fluid overload. An example of a drug that inhibits access to transport is probenicid, which blocks the access of penicillin to the organic anion transporter protein in the renal tubules to prevent its excretion and prolong its action in the body. An important physiological example that illustrates all of these potential drug targets is synaptic transmission in the nervous system. A wave of depolarization is propagated down the neuronal axon because of the progressive opening of voltage-gated sodium channels. When it arrives at the depol and depolarizes the synaptic terminal, it activates voltage-gated calcium channels, increasing their permeability to allow the entry of calcium ions. Calcium ions enable synaptic vesicles rich in neurotransmitter to be transported to the cell membrane and high concentrations of neurotransmitter molecules to be extruded into the synaptic space where they can diffuse to activate postsynaptic receptors. The activity of the postsynaptic receptors is only terminated when the concentration of neurotransmitter in the synaptic space falls. This is normally achieved by a combination of enzymatic degradation and reuptake by transporters into the presynaptic terminal. Each of these mechanisms provides opportunities for drugs to influence nerve activity. Drugs that inhibit voltage-gated ion channels or block postsynaptic receptors will reduce nerve transmission, whereas those that inhibit enzymes or block reuptake transport molecules will enhance it. In addition to these non-receptor targets of drug action, there are of course many other mechanisms of drug action that are used in modern therapeutics. Here are just some examples. The use of simple alkalis to neutralize gastric acid in peptic ulcer disease. 
the use of binding agents to remove unwanted excess products such as bile salts, phosphate or poisons from the gut, the use of vitamins and other supplements to replace deficiencies, the use of chemotherapeutic agents to kill malignant cells in a variety of cancers, the use of antibiotics to kill bacteria in a variety of infections, and finally, the use of monoclonal antibodies to bind signaling molecules in chronic inflammatory or immunological diseases. That brings me to a brief review of the key points of this presentation. Voltage-gated ion channels open in response to changes in transmembrane voltage and enable specific ions to cross the otherwise imper impermeable cell membrane. Drugs can inhibit this action by blocking the channel or binding to inhibit its action. Enzymes are proteins that catalyze the formation of important cellular products or degrade other molecules. Drugs are able to inhibit this action by acting as a competitive substrate, binding to cause allosteric changes in the enzyme protein, or interfering with a cofactor. Transporter proteins enable molecules and ions to cross the cell membrane. Drugs that inhibit this activity by binding to the transporter or interfering with the binding of the substrate. You can find further reading and resources to support your learning at the locations above. I hope you found this presentation helpful and look forward to you joining me again for more clinical pharmacology at this site shortly.